Hello there. I've been working with a construction team in Louisiana for five years now. It's not an easy job, but I love being outside, so it suits me just fine. We were working near this huge swamp called the Atchafalaya Basin. Imagine lots of alligators, snakes, and really muddy water. It's a strange place where you might expect to see unusual things, but nothing quite like what I experienced one night. It was getting pretty late, around 9 in the evening, and we were finishing up our work for the day. The sun had already set, and the only light came from our trucks and a couple of big lights we had set up. Most of the crew had already gone home, leaving just me and a couple of other guys to pack up. The air was thick with humidity, like it always is down here, and there was this constant buzzing from all the insects. Just a typical Louisiana evening, you know? So there I was, loading tools into the back of the truck, when I heard this strange noise. It wasn't like any animal sound I knew of. It sounded like something scraping against the ground. At first I thought it might be one of the guys messing around, but the noise was too odd for that. Then I heard it again closer this time. I stopped what I was doing and looked around trying to figure out where it was coming from. I had to crane my neck in all directions, even stepping away from the site to get a better look. That's when I saw it. This thing emerging from the trees. It was about 50 feet away and at first I thought it might be a person, but something was off. As it got closer, I realized just how strange it really was. The thing was incredibly pale, almost white, and it had a human-like shape, but its limbs were way too long, almost reaching down to the ground and the way it moved. It was unnatural. It sort of shuffled along, dragging its arms and feet, but the weirdest part was its eyes. They glowed in the dark, reflecting light like an animal's eyes. I couldn't move, and I was just frozen there, staring at this creature. It felt like time had stopped, and all I could hear was the buzzing of insects around me, and it was like my brain couldn't make sense of what I was seeing. Then the creature made this strange noise, like a whimper, and it took a few more steps towards me, and that's when one of the guys yelled out from the truck, snapping me back to reality. Hey Jack, what are you doing? Let's go! I turned to answer him, but when I looked back, the creature was closer, maybe only 30 feet away now. I wanted to run, but my legs wouldn't move, so I just stood there watching as it came nearer. The way it moved was so unsettling, and it didn't walk like a person. It kind of slithered along in its arms. They swung back and forth as it moved. It didn't leave any tracks on the ground either. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. For a moment it stopped and stared at me with those eerie red eyes and the air felt charged, like before a storm and all I could hear was my own heartbeat. And then it let out this big sigh and turned away, disappearing back into the trees as silently as it had come. I stood there for a while trying to process what I'd just seen, but I didn't tell the guys about it. I just made up some excuse about seeing a sick deer. I knew they wouldn't believe me anyway. The rest of the drive back was quiet, and when I got home I couldn't stop thinking about that creature, but I didn't dare tell anyone else. It felt like it didn't belong in our world, like it was something from a nightmare. Luckily, I got transferred to a different crew the next week further north. It helped me sleep a bit easier at night, but I still couldn't shake the feeling of being watched whenever I was outside. Oh well. I guess I'll just keep plodding along and hope nothing like that ever happens again. I've got a story that I've never shared before and I always felt a little scared to tell anyone because I thought they might think I'm a bit strange. But maybe someone out there will understand what I mean. I live in a place where there's not many trees or places to hike. We hardly ever see snow or get much rain. So when I went to visit my sister and her new husband, Sam, for Christmas, I was excited. They moved to Massachusetts recently, where Sam grew up. I knew it snowed there, but that's about it. Massachusetts sure gets a lot of snow. When I got there, the snow was super deep and it was freezing cold, but it was nice to see my sister. Her husband, Sam, is really nice, too, and we get along well. The day after Christmas, it was snowing like crazy. Sam told me about this cool hiking trail behind their house and he said you could see a beautiful view of the town all covered in snow. I was getting ready for the hike when Sam came in and said he had to go to work. 
He works with computers, and there was some problem he needed to fix. He felt bad for leaving me alone. Then he gave me a hand-drawn map of the area. It's easy, he said, pointing out the good spots to see on the map. Then he left, and the house got quiet. My sister was already at work. I was all bundled up for the hike, even though maybe I didn't need so many clothes, but I'm not used to snow. I'm from a place where it's always warm. Looking out the window, I saw it was snowing so hard you could hardly see anything. It looked cool, so I decided to go for the hike anyway. I walked to the backyard and crossed a little fence heading towards the woods. Sam wasn't lying, it was really beautiful. The snow made everything so quiet and it was all so white. But once I got into the woods, it was darker because of all the trees. It took a moment for my eyes to adjust and it was surprisingly warm in there, which seemed strange. As I walked, I suddenly smelled something awful, like rotting garbage or spoiled meat. It wasn't a normal smell for the woods, and I thought maybe an animal had died in the cold. But I kept walking, thinking maybe it was just something normal here that I didn't know about. I felt a little nervous in my stomach for a moment, but then it went away and the smell faded too. But then, out of nowhere, the smell came back even stronger. It was so bad I almost gagged, and then I heard something moving through the trees, like hooves or something. I started walking faster, not daring to look behind me. I just wanted to get to the end of the trail, and when I got there, I saw the town below through the thick snowfall. But then I heard noises from the woods behind me. I really didn't want to go back through there. The smell was still terrible, and it seemed to be getting worse, and I knew it was cold outside, so anything that smelled like that had to be fresh. I looked back into the darkness of the woods and saw something. It looked like a big animal, maybe a deer or elk, but its eyes were yellow and red and its antlers were black and covered in blood, and its body looked like it was falling apart. I couldn't move, I was so scared. The thing stood up on its back legs, towering over me. It looked like it hadn't eaten in ages, its skin hanging off its bones like rags. I finally snapped out of it and ran sideways along the trees until I found a path leading away from the woods. I slid down the path and ended up in a parking lot behind a fast food restaurant. I went inside to warm up and catch my breath. I was freezing and sweating at the same time, but I waited there for a while trying to calm down. I wanted to tell someone about what I saw, but I knew they'd think I was crazy. When I finally felt a little better, I walked back to my sister's house, taking the long way around. I stuck to the streets and avoided going near the woods again. Every year our family had a special tradition, a trip to the beautiful Apostle Islands in Wisconsin. It was a time when everything seemed to burst with life, spring turning into summer, flowers blooming, and the weather just right. As we arrived at our family cabin, nestled among the trees, the sky was clear and bright. There were ten of us in our group, mom, dad, my siblings, cousins, and me. Our cabin was more than just a house in the woods. It was a magical place where we escaped from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. These trips were like stepping into a fairy tale full of wonder and adventure. I loved everything about our cabin getaways, roasting marshmallows to make s'mores, singing songs around the campfire, and listening to Grandpa's exciting tales. Each memory was precious and made our cabin feel like a place out of a storybook. Even though it took us eight hours to drive from our home in Milwaukee, it was always worth it. The anticipation of reaching our cabin filled me with excitement every time. As our car rumbled along the bumpy gravel road towards our cozy cabin, I imagined all the exciting adventures awaiting us. When we finally arrived, the sight of our cabin never failed to amaze us. It sat perched on the edge of Lake Superior, with the Apostle Islands dotting the horizon. The view was so stunning it could inspire anyone. We wasted no time diving into outdoor fun. First, we embarked on a breathtaking hike, feeling the presence of Mother Nature all around us. Then we gathered for a cookout, savoring the delicious food and warm company. Afterward, we headed down to the shoreline for some fishing. I loved the challenge of trying to reel in a big catch and feeling the cool breeze on my face. As the day slowly turned into night, everyone began to retreat to their beds, leaving me as the only one awake. I've always been a night owl, 
and I relished the quiet moments, especially when the moonlight illuminated the landscape. I settled into my comfy chair, ready to watch the stars by the lake. The moon was round and glowing that night, making the lake shimmer with its light. It was so calm and quiet just the way I liked it, but little did I know something surprising was about to happen. Suddenly, I noticed a dark shape near the edge of the water. I squinted, trying to see what it was. Maybe it was one of my family members taking a walk, but as I kept looking, I realized it wasn't anyone I knew. There was something strange about the figure that made me feel uneasy. It was about five feet tall and looked like a creature against the bright moonlight. I blinked in surprise, rubbed my eyes, but when I looked again it was still there, not changing at all. My heart beat faster and louder in my chest, making a booming sound in the quiet. Its wings were folded against its body, like a bat's but much bigger, and they looked like they were covered in black feathers. It stood up straight like a person, but something about it seemed strange, like a drawing from a scary dream. Its face was especially odd, making me feel scared even now when I think about it. There were no features on it that I could see, except for two huge, shiny red eyes. They seemed to shine in the moonlight, not showing any feelings, just staring right at me. It stayed there, not moving at all, its eyes never leaving me. I was so frightened that I couldn't even move, and my breathing was all shaky and uneven. I don't know exactly how long it was there. But eventually it spread out its big wings and flew away from the shore, disappearing into the dark sky with a strange kind of grace. I let out a frightened whimper and quickly jumped up, then my heart pounded as I dashed back to the cabin. I felt so relieved when I reached it and found the door had a strong lock. The next day, I decided to go back to the spot where I saw the strange thing. Part of me hoped I would find something there to prove I hadn't imagined it, but there was nothing. I searched around, but there were no signs of anything unusual. When I told my family about what happened, they just smiled skeptically and teased me gently, but they didn't believe me. Years passed, and I kept the memory to myself. Then one day, I read about something called the Mothman. It was described so similarly to what I had seen. A strange relief washed over me as I realized I wasn't alone in my experience. Even now, I still dream about those glowing eyes that appeared to me once. They're like a memory that won't fade, reminding me of that strange moment. Looking back, even though it scared me, I can't help but find it interesting. It makes me think about all the amazing stories my grandpa used to tell. Whenever I go back to the cabin, I can't help but stare at the shoreline. Part of me hopes I won't see that mysterious figure again, but another part wonders what might happen if I do. Every peaceful night at the cabin feels different now, and it's like there's something exciting hiding in the shadows, waiting to surprise me. I can't shake the feeling of anticipation, wondering if I'll meet the Mothman again. Even though I got really scared, that memory made me start thinking about things that aren't normal. At first, our family's favorite place to go for a break, the cabin became a place where I wanted to uncover the secrets of the Mothman. That night totally changed how I felt about going to the cabin. What I mean is, there's a whole lot more out there than what we usually see or believe. Encounters like the one I had, which are rare and puzzling, show us that there's a whole mysterious world out there. It reminds us that there are so many things we don't understand, and that's pretty exciting. For many years, I've been a forest guardian at Yosemite National Park. My job involves exploring the woods, doing lots of paperwork, and sometimes helping people who get lost. But there's something about this park that feels a bit strange, especially during the night. One time when I was doing my usual rounds, it was very late, maybe after midnight. The moon was only a tiny slice in the sky, but the air was cold, making my nose feel funny when I breathed in. I was walking down a hidden trail far away from where most people go. This path is tucked away in the eastern part of the park, near two Alumne Meadows. The night was silent, which felt strange. Usually you'd hear owls hooting or coyotes howling, but that night it was as quiet as a mouse. That's when I got a feeling something wasn't right. 
Over my years in the park, I've learned to trust my feelings, so I became very alert. As I kept walking, my hand stayed on my flashlight. Its beam cut through the dark, making long shadows between the trees. Then I heard a sound. It wasn't loud, more like a soft whisper, but in the quiet of the night it sounded loud. I turned towards the noise, my heart starting to beat fast. And that's when I saw it. Standing not too far away was a strange creature. At first it looked like a big dog, but when I shone my flashlight on it I saw more details. It stood on two legs, covered in thick, dark fur, and its head was like a dog's with pointy ears and a long nose. But its eyes, they looked human. They were smart and looking straight at me. I stood there looking back at it. My mind was racing, trying to understand what I was seeing. It didn't seem mean, just standing there, watching me with curious eyes. I've heard stories from older folks about weird creatures in the woods, but I always thought they were just stories. Yet, here I was, face to face with something that didn't make sense. I stood still, my heart pounding in my chest. The creature's eyes felt like they were talking to me, like it knew me somehow. It wasn't just an animal. It felt like it had thoughts and feelings, like a person. I noticed it wasn't just standing there. It seemed to be telling me something. Its head tilted like it was wondering why I was there, but it wasn't acting like a wild animal. It was more like it was saying, don't do anything sudden. So I didn't move, keeping my hand near my radio. The forest was silent around us and it felt like everything was waiting to see what would happen. In that moment, all my training and experience didn't matter. I wasn't a forest guardian anymore. I was just another creature in the wild of Yosemite. Then, without a sound, the creature backed away. It moved quietly, like it didn't want to be noticed. As it disappeared into the shadows, I felt like something important had just happened. I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding and turned on my radio, but I didn't call anyone. What would I even say? That I saw a creature that shouldn't exist? No, this was something I needed to think about alone. In the days after that, I couldn't stop thinking about what happened, so I went about my work, but my mind was stuck on that night. I went back to where I saw the creature, hoping to see it again. I felt like the encounter was more than just chance. It felt like the creature wanted me to see it. So I started looking into it, reading old records and asking around. I found stories of other people seeing similar creatures, but none in Yosemite. This was something new. I became obsessed with finding out more, so I spent my nights patrolling, hoping to see the creature again. I asked other guardians if they'd seen anything strange, but no one had. Then about two weeks later, it happened again. I was on patrol near El Capitan, a famous spot for climbers. The moon was brighter that night, lighting up the cliffs. As I walked, I heard a noise like something moving in the leaves. I turned, and there it was again, closer this time. Its fur was brown and messy, and its eyes watched me with curiosity. We stood there for a while, neither of us moving, but this time I didn't feel scared. It felt like the creature knew me, and I knew it. We were just two creatures sharing a moment in the forest. I don't know how long we stood there, but eventually the creature left and I didn't try to follow. I knew it wouldn't want that. In the weeks after, I kept my encounters to myself. Some things are better left as mysteries. The creature of Yosemite became my secret, something I experienced that changed how I saw the world. I still work in Yosemite, and every night I wonder if I'll see the creature again. I haven't yet, but maybe that's okay. Some mysteries are meant to be experienced, not solved, and the creature of Yosemite is one of those mysteries for me, and I'm glad I got to be a part of it. There was a married couple named Jack and Emily, and they had been together for eight years and were thinking about having kids someday. Jack worked with computers, fixing them when they went wrong. Emily was a teacher, helping kids learn new things every day. They were both very sensible and didn't believe in making up stories or seeing things that weren't really there. They had been saving up their money for a long time to buy some land. They wanted to build their dream house there, and finally, they found the perfect spot in Northern California, right in the middle of the Redwoods. It was a beautiful place, hidden away from everything, just like they wanted. 
It was close to a small town called Oryk, not too far from the sea, but you might not have heard of it before. One weekend, they went to see the land they wanted to buy. They wanted to see where they could build their house and plan everything out. It was a lovely day with the sun shining bright. They walked through the woods, talking about their plans, and they talked about where they'd put the kitchen and how big they'd make the deck. Suddenly, they heard a strange noise, and it was a deep, low sound, like a moan, but not quite. Emily looked puzzled, and Jack felt a little uneasy, too, so they stopped walking and listened carefully. They heard the noise again, and it sounded closer this time, but they didn't know what it could be. They weren't experts on the animals that lived in the woods. The trees were thick in this part of the woods, so they couldn't see very far ahead, so they squinted, trying to see if there was anything moving between the trees. Then they saw it. It was a huge figure, about 30 yards away. It was covered in dark brown or almost black hair. It stood on two legs like a person, but it wasn't a person. It was taller than any person they'd ever seen. Emily grabbed Jack's arm tightly, and they both couldn't believe what they were seeing. The figure just stood there, looking at them. Jack thought maybe it was a person dressed up as something else, but deep down he knew it wasn't. It looked too real. The figure didn't move, and it just stood there looking away, but slowly turning its head towards them. Finally, it saw them, but it didn't do anything. Then, as if it had decided they weren't a threat, it turned and walked away. It moved quietly. One moment it was there, and the next, it disappeared into the trees. Jack and Emily were still standing there, not moving or saying anything. Finally, Emily asked Jack if he had seen it clearly. Jack just nodded, and they were both shaken up. Jack thought to himself, could it be a Sasquatch? It couldn't be, right? But what else could it be? They decided they'd seen enough for one day. As they walked back to the car, the silence between them felt heavy, and it was like neither of them wanted to say what they were thinking. When they got into the car, Jack started the engine, but they didn't hurry to leave. They just sat there, looking out at the forest, thinking about what they had seen. Finally, after a long silence, Emily speaks up. Was that a Sasquatch? She whispers, her voice barely audible. I can only nod in response. What else could it have been? I've heard stories and watched TV shows about it, but I never thought I'd encounter one myself, not until today. We begin discussing, trying to make sense of what we saw. Maybe it was something else. But deep down, we both know that's not true. Regular animals don't move like that, don't look like that, but this was different, something entirely unfamiliar to us. The journey back to our home is quiet with both of us lost in our own thoughts. Occasionally, one of us starts to speak, then stops abruptly. What can you even say after witnessing something like that? Once we arrive home, we immediately turn to the internet for answers, and we spend hours searching for Sasquatch sightings, hoping to find anything similar to our experience. There are plenty of stories, some not too far from where we were. It's somewhat reassuring, knowing we're not alone in our encounter. However, the more we read, the more uneasy we become, and there are countless tales and sightings, yet it's all treated as a joke. How can so many people witness something, and yet it's not taken seriously? We discuss the idea of returning to the site, maybe attempting to see it again. The following days are strange. We try to carry on with our lives, but there's a lingering sense of unease. We're easily startled on edge, and every little sound makes us jump. It's as if we're waiting for the other to suggest going back, and we're not confiding in anyone else about it. But keeping such a secret is challenging, and it feels like it's constantly on our minds, ready to burst out. And I can't stop thinking about that land, our future home. Can we still build there, knowing what lurks in those woods? Emily and I have lengthy discussions every night, dissecting every detail. We even start having dreams about it, at least I do. I wake up in the dead of night, heart pounding, sensing its presence outside our window, or worse, beside our bed. A few weeks pass, and we're still on edge. But life must continue, right? We own that plot of land, and we have plans for it. We can't just abandon everything due to one peculiar encounter. So we make the decision to return. I know it sounds crazy, but we need to see it again. We head back there, this time more cautiously. We tell ourselves we're only going to survey the land, make some plans, nothing more. Yet, deep down, 
I think both of us are secretly hoping, maybe even expecting, to encounter it again. As we arrived, everything seemed calm and quiet, just like always. We walked around discussing where we could put things, but something felt different. We kept checking behind us, listening for any strange noises. Time went by, and still, there was nothing unusual. It was as if nothing had ever happened there, and I didn't know if I should feel relieved or disappointed. It was confusing, feeling both emotions at once. Just as we were about to leave, Emily suddenly grabbed my arm and she was staring at something in the trees. I followed her gaze and that's when I saw it. The Sasquatch, standing at the edge of the woods observing us. It was farther away this time, but I could still recognize the same creature and this time I could see it more clearly. It was tall, incredibly tall, with arms that reached down past its knees. Its face was partly covered in hair, but I could see its eyes. Then, just like before, it turned and walked away, disappearing into the forest. We didn't say much during the drive back. We had seen it again, and both of us were thinking about it. It was real. As real as anything. Now we had to decide what to do about our land, our dream. Should we build there, knowing what lurked in those woods? Or should we abandon it? That's where we are now, stuck in this undecided state, and we haven't made a decision yet. It's tough, knowing there's something out there, something mysterious and untamed. And that's the tale, as unbelievable as it may sound. A real encounter with a Sasquatch, not just once, but twice. It makes you wonder what other secrets are waiting out there, doesn't it?